Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I have a very special guest today. This is literally breaking news, Pure Dog Talk edition. As we all watch the developments in the Ukraine and in Europe, and what many of us dog breeders automatically go to is the dog people and fear and concern for our friends in a sport that is entirely global these days. And so my thought was to reach out to Europe's answer to pure dog talk. And that is talking dogs with Auntie. And this is Auntie Luchin. And I am very thrilled to have Auntie join us. And we are going to talk about what's happening in Europe on the ground. You're about a thousand miles away. Is that about right? I, I am very badly geographic. So don't I, ask I me looked how- it up on Google. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me how far I am, but I'm quite far away from you. That's for sure. Okay, from from the Ukraine though, from the uh, from Ukraine. Well, it depends. You know, Ukraine is a very right. big country. Yes, from like the western part of Ukraine, where it's safe still, yeah. sort of. We are, we are. I think, I think, if I read correctly in the newspapers, mm-hmm. the nearest place in Croatia is about three hundred kilometers to the nearest place in Ukraine. Okay. Still, it's not one country where we know. You know, when I normally go. A lot, but I know a lot of people there, and uh, obviously at this point of, uh, you know, when when the situations are like this, uh, dog people connect very, very quickly, and uh, and then you try to, you know, to help in any possible way. So I'm really happy that you have invited me. I appreciate it, and if both you and me, yes. uh, with our two talk shows, can uh, make a difference yes. and help, thing, I'm very happy to do it. Well, Antti, I talk about here in the U.S. and I believe it is global. Our tribe right? Dog people, we stick together in an emergency. And I think that's what this is. So I wanted you to talk to my listeners here and around the world about what is happening specifically on the ground, what you know, what you can share and anything that we can do to help. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the thing is, um, that uh, in situations like this, you know, it's always very difficult to say anything because of course, um, uh, this this horrible emergency situation um, has connected a lot of people, a lot of dog people from all around the world. But then, of course, has made a lot of you know different opinions and uh, mm-hmm. and fights and everything. So we're not I mean, talking I, politics. We're just no, talking. No, what can no, we do for no. dogs? Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. I wanted to say just that when it all started. I said the same like you. I'm not interested in any politics. Mm-hmm. Politics is not something that interests me. I want to help people. If there is a way to help people, here I am. So what we have actually tried to do is that, you know, we have tried to uh, place as much as possible information on our Facebook group, uh, try to connect directly with the people who are still in Ukraine, try to find out what is that they need. Then, of course, I'm repeating again, Ukraine is a huge country. Of course, there are still uh, places which are, you know, not affected by the war, but there are places which are heavily affected by the war. And one of them is obviously the, the capital city, Kiev, you know, and there is a lot of a lot of uh, dog people in Kiev. Okay. Um, for your viewers who maybe don't know it, um, Ukraine um, is quite famous in Europe as a very professional organizer of dog shows. Um, and they were, they are supposed to have the World Dog Show, FCI World Dog Show in 2023. So, I mean, they are a, a country with a lot of experience and a lot of good dog people. Um, unfortunately, uh, at this point, um, things are quite difficult because um, in the places which are affected by the war, at the moment, it's impossible to move. This is the biggest problem. You know, there are still a lot of dog people and there are still a lot of um, people in general who would like maybe you know to go away from the war at least um, uh, children and and women because uh, obviously for the men it's not allowed to leave the country Uh, but unfortunately when this all started even if you know it everybody newspapers uh, media they were talking a lot about this but actually it happened like a surprise to everybody right you know people who who really managed to escape in the first, let's say, 48 hours, they have managed. But the rest of the people are now very limited with the options which they can do. So what we are trying to do at the moment, um, and I'm not going to say, you know, that uh, <clears throat> it is personally me doing uh, this or whatever. I'm I'm more really trying to, you know, to connect all the people. Coordinate. Because I, 
yeah, because I think that's the most important thing at the moment. Um, we are trying to see who needs help, where they need help, and what kind of help they need. Uh, what has been happening in the last, let's say, 48 hours, I know a lot of uh, dog people from uh, the neighboring countries like Hungary, um, Romania, um, Moldova, you know, they were driving till the border with Ukraine and the people from Ukraine were uh, finding some kind of ways, you know, uh, to send their own dogs. I have just read the story maybe one hour ago <clears throat> about 40 English Cocker Spaniels arriving to the border with Hungary and all these dogs were I, like literally in half an hour um, you know, people found play homes for them in Poland, mm -hmm. in uh, in Hungary. You know, to keep them until the the breeder can can catch them. But of course, there are people who were not lucky enough, you know, to be able to. Hang on a the second. The border, so that. Say that again, Angie. Our our uh, our internet wavered a minute. Okay, from where to start? Um, the the there are people who still can't get to the border. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So the, the thing is that there are unfortunately now uh, a lot of people who cannot come to the border or who cannot organize the transport for their dogs till the border. I have read um, a lot of posts today where people are begging, you know, to find any kind of transportation, if not for human, at least for the dogs, because um, the dog people are really, and you said it in the beginning, and I'm going to repeat it 100 million times, dog people are amazing when it comes to this kind of situations. Yes. And um, in any country, in any border, that people are uh, being able to send their dogs, you know, we find people who will go there and who will catch the dogs and who will put them in the nice homes and everything. And the same for the people, you know, there are like, in my group, there are hundreds and hundreds of messages from people from all around the world who say, we can, uh, uh, you know, take dogs, we can take people, we will help as much as we can. Unfortunately, um, I go back to the fact that unfortunately now the people who are there mostly will have to stay there for some more time. And uh, what is now, uh, let's say, emergency is the dog food. This is uh, what I was talking with a lot of breeders in Ukraine. I was talking with uh, um, Helen, who is the vice president of the, of the Kennel Club. Um, the dog food is a big problem. So what we are trying you know, to, 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 to see at the moment is um, we will try to connect tomorrow with the Red Cross to see if there is a possibility to send some amounts of dog food with them. And then um, I have contacted almost all the big uh, distributors of different uh, um, pet food brands uh, all over Europe. And there are a few more who have some, um, some food still in Ukraine. Um, at least two, I know that they have some food in, um, in um, Odessa and in Kiev. So we are trying to see if tomorrow there is a possibility that we collect the money, that we buy off all this food which they have there. Obviously, they would give us a, a, as best as possible price for it, mm -hmm. you know, and then the dog people could collect money. And but the problem, again, is the transport, you know. So yes. uh, how do you get it from Odessa to uh, yeah. Kharkiv, say, for example? You yeah. know, I mean, that's that's a long way. And there's people blowing things up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, that this, you know, the, the, the transportation at the moment is the biggest problem, but, you know, the, 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 we, cannot, we cannot give it a try. We cannot just right. stay on and say, okay, now it's impossible. So it's really, uh, and I'm, I'm going to say it again, not only me personally, hundreds and hundreds of dog yes. people all around Europe and all around the world who are trying to find every possible possibility to help. So at the moment, um, I want to say also to your um, viewers, uh, what people uh, in Ukraine need the most is the dog food. Okay. This is why we are going to try at this point to um, uh, collect money to mm -hmm. try to buy, well, if it will be possible, this food, which is still in Ukraine, but then also try to connect with, uh, with Red Cross or with any people who will possibly go to till the border, you know, mm -hmm. um, and take from there, because there are obviously still uh, some men who are driving uh, women, children and dogs till the border. So um, whenever we find somebody like that, you know, when we uh, manage to organize that somebody takes the dogs, we try to send back some dog food yes. with them back. So 
I mean, it's a uh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of organization. It's not easy, but it's amazing how much those people want to help, and I think that's great. And I think people in the U.S. want to help. People around the world want to help. So we can send people to Talking Dogs with Anchi, your Facebook page. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm I'm sharing there almost all the information that I can get. Okay. Uh, I must say there are also some groups um, which are specialized um, already now for the transport and these things. These groups are mostly in uh, um, in Poland because yes. Poland has a big border with Ukraine. Um, obviously, there are information about these pages also on my page. Yes. Um, so we are trying to you know to send the people in all possible directions where they can find the information how to help. You know, it's a lot of people who are writing to me and say, please give us some account. Uh, we would like to send the money. Um, I would not like to deal with that personally, but we are trying to see the. there are obviously some uh, some uh, breeders who have asked for the financial help and I have published their stories and their account numbers or PayPal account or whatever okay. in my group. So people, if they want, they can do private donations to them for the dog Perfect. food or for whatever. Um, but then I hope that in the next few days we will manage to to have some kind of account maybe organized by the Canon Club in Ukraine or something like that, where people will be able to give donations and help them, you know, to, to, to you know, put this money on the places where it's needed and to, to help to the breeders on the ground, because that's what we want to do. Right. And Angie, you, you mentioned the Kennel Club in Ukraine. It is a very well-known group of people. Um, are they trying to organize something there within the Kennel Club, within those people to, to do what you're talking about, make a central depository that people can can support and, and work within the country? Obviously they are. Um, I, I don't know, you know, how, also, you know, the problem is this, you know, in Kiev, it's impossible to move at the moment, yeah, you know. Right, everybody's <laughs> hiding in a subway. I mean, I just can't even. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a, um, I'm a child of war, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if my if in my uh, city where where I was born, you know, we had the bombing just for one day. I remember how horrible it is. But, you know, when you are in a situation like this, you cannot do anything. You are, you know, in a shelter, uh, you know, and, and that's it. Like you cannot move. So I'm sure they are trying to organize the things. But what I have, you know, whenever we go in one direction and we think, OK, this could be done or that could be done. It's always the transport, which is a problem, you know, so. Obviously, they are working and uh, uh, whichever information they will have or whatever they will uh, manage to, to organize, it will be shared. But then there are, as I said, private breeders, you know, private persons all around Ukraine who are themselves, you know, trying to help to other, other breeders. And, uh, you know, it is working in a way that whoever has the possibility to help or a way to help gives it the, the information and then, you know, we try to organize it. Is okay. it easy? Not, but uh, we all hope that this madness is going to stop as soon as possible. And, uh, and because it is just uh, devastating to watch all this news. So Anchi, you are in Croatia. Um, I'm in Croatia. Yes. And so you said you are a child of war. I assume the, the war in Croatia. Yeah. Um, People in the United States and, and many of the Western countries don't have that experience. They just don't understand I it. Them. And, and so I wonder if you can help paint that picture for them, that, that just sheer devastation. Yeah. You know, uh, first of all, I must say, as I said to you, you know, my, my country was... Uh, um, was heavily bombed. My country has been uh, uh, passing difficult years of war, uh, but not so much in the city where I was born. This is the, the the lucky thing for me. But of course, we have all experienced horrible news and everything. And I mean, when we had this one day of bombing uh, in Split, I was twelve years old. But you know, I can I can you know I can think of it like it was yesterday. You know, this uh, fear and panic of my mother and my grandmother, and and you know you. At that time, we had one pet dog, you know, and, and we took this one pet dog to the shelter with us. But I'm thinking of myself now when I have more dogs, you know, if something like that would happen, what would I do with my dogs? How would I uh, deal with the situations that my dogs don't have food? You know, I mean, it is it is just uh, horrible even to think about that, what these people are passing just now. And um, 
And I think uh, we just need really to try to help as much as possible. And I'm repeating the same like you, like I'm absolutely not interested in any politics. Leave me away from this. I'm not part of it. I don't want to be a part of it. Let's just see how we can help with these people because you know it from your side. I know it from my side. You know, if at this point, you know, we would be in that kind of situation, we would really appreciate that our dog peep, dog friends from all around the world are trying to help us. So I think that's the, I mean, that's even- it's all even we if can do. Yeah, yeah. Even if sometimes, you know, maybe some people, you cannot reach them, you know, and you cannot help actually at this point, almost anything, this kind of support and, you know, uh, saying to them, listen, in a second when it's going to be possible to help, there are 200 people standing in the line who want yes. to help you, means a lot to them. I agree. Can you talk a little bit? This is absolutely your area of expertise. Talk to us, share with people outside Europe and outside the Eastern Europe, particularly. You talk about some of the breeders in Ukraine, talk about some of the breeds they have, talk about. I saw one report with a woman that had 50 Labradors. I can't even imagine. So, can you talk, share some of those really specific stories about people um, and help? people feel that you, you know it's um, it's difficult to you know to share to share someone's private stories you know and and even you know to try to explain to 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 someone uh, what 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 are they passing right now um i have a very very good friend you know when we have been at the european dog show um in in kiev uh, she has been helping us with accommodation and everything and she has been showing her dogs many times um uh, in split uh, at, at the shows that i'm organizing um you know she has two small kids and she has great danes you know and great danes are not uh, easy dogs you know not to feed not to you know these dogs at this moment they cannot go out they cannot you cannot do anything like what you normally do and then of course you have children which are you know there and so i mean these these are uh, horrible stories from people and and uh, it's just uh, you know i you know we, we can try to you know to think what they're passing but i don't think anybody of us no. can really understand you know because it is uh, the, the the problem is that that in in these kind of situations they have no idea what the morning brings you know they have no idea what is going to be in the next one hour they don't know you know what the life will bring and how the things will go and um, we can only only just really uh, pray and hope that uh, yes. that this will end as soon as possible not nothing more than that and and at this point uh, you know thank to all the dog people from all around the world who are trying to help in any possible way because i think that means a lot I believe it does too. And I think that uh, I can certainly pass on from myself and from my listeners uh, at Pure Dog Talk all around the world, as well as here in the US. Anything that we can do to help, we are we stand ready to help as individuals. Yeah. And, and that is all we can do. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, from, from my side to, to say thank you to you and to everybody you know, who, who is trying to help um i don't know you know uh, how much we can help but whatever we can help it means a lot to these people so uh, as i said in the next few days first of all we will see in which direction all this will go right. um people are still trying you know um I think maybe people who in the beginning didn't want to, to go out of the country, maybe they are thinking that now this is a, a good way because nobody knows for how long this will go on. And the only thing what I can say, um, you know, from the, out, from the other side of the border, mm -hmm. that um, anyone in Ukraine who wants uh, to find a home uh, for their own dogs or for them or for their children, as soon as they arrive to the border, to any country, Poland, Moldova, Romania, Hungary, there are dog people waiting for them, you know, with open hearts. Um, and, and all we can do is to pray that that most of them will manage to, to save their lives and the lives of their children and their dogs. That is an amazing, um, that is an amazing vision. So, I, and I believe absolutely true. 
So thank yeah. you. You know, Laura, I, I will say just one more thing to you. Uh, um, you, you for sure know when, I mean, we know, we don't know each other personally and we never spoke before. Um, you know, we all know that the dog world can sometimes be a cruel world and, you know, and there can be all kinds of things in the dog world. But I said in the beginning, the, this, this sport, this hobby, however you want to call it, these people who love dogs, they are, whenever there are situations like this, they are always ready to help and they don't ask any questions. There are people literally in every corner of the world, the dog people who are ready now in this moment, you know, to help to people they have never seen in their life only because they're sharing the same common love for the dogs. And I think that's, that's, the, that's absolutely the best part of this sport. Absolutely the best part of it. It is what makes it all worthwhile. And, and it is absolutely real and absolutely mind boggling to me on a daily basis, how yeah. much this is a tribe of people who takes care of each other. And Oops. so I, and everyone I know stands ready to help in any way we can. And that's what we're doing here. Listeners, uh, viewers, be sure to check out Talking Dogs with Anchi. You can find it on Facebook. Um, yeah. Anchi will be continuing to keep that updated and anything that we can do to help, I think is gonna be available there. And I'm as, so, much, as much as we can, let's, let's, like you say, kind of try and consolidate so that people can really, you know, help in a specific place. And I think- yeah, This is what we are trying to do, you know, we are trying to put on one place people who can help, house. Mm -hmm. people who need help to tell, you know, mm -hmm. because there is no need that we send to people things that they don't need. So right. it's a good way, you know, to, to know which people need, what they need, mm -hmm. and which people are the nearest, you know, to them they could that right. could help. So I hope I hope we can all help as much as possible in the days to come. Absolutely. Well, this will be shared on Pure Dog Talks Facebook page and on Pure Dog Talks website and on Pure Dog Talks podcast. So we will get the word to as many of our 200,000 listeners as we possibly can. So Yeah. Thanks a lot Laura. I mean it, it you know I it really means a lot that uh, that we can try somebody wrote somebody wrote uh, um, a few hours ago uh, you know it's nice when the people who have a power you know to send the message to to other people, you know, use their platforms to help. So this is what we are trying to do. And um, from my side, uh, I'm, I'm first of all, maybe a little bit sorry that you and me, we didn't meet in a um, nicer circumstances. And that At we the didn't... World Dog Show next year and... would have been much better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, I'm sure it's going to be time also for that. And I, I want to thank personally to you and to everybody of your um, viewers and listeners who will, who will uh, you know, connect and try to help the people in Ukraine in any possible way. Any possible way. Thank you very much, Angie. Thank you, Laura.